I only work with the highest vibrations possible. And then, and it's so specific to what you say. So there's a reason that we are verbal beings and what we say also comes with the vibration. So also this all coincides with the laws of thermodynamics and physics. Matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. You know, um, so that's the first law of thermodynamics. So this also, I like to also like bring sort of the woo-woo and the science together so people understand that there actually is a foundation to it. And it's not just something that's made up and, <laughs> you know, and, and is sort of flighty and, you know, woo-woo. So namaste, uh, beautiful souls. I'm Shilpa and you're tuned into the Omni Mindfulness Podcast, a sanctuary for spiritual entrepreneurs. As a holistic mindfulness coach and social marketing strategist, I'm here to guide you on a transformative journey. On this show, we explore captivating stories and provide practical tools that deepen your connection with your authentic self through the personal and professional narratives of remarkable Remarkable individuals, we expand our consciousness and ignite the spark of possibility. Each season, I curate content that empowers you to create a holistic lifestyle encompassing spirituality, mindfulness, energy awareness, and mindset. Join me as we engage in conversations with experts in their respective fields and share solo casts from yours truly, all aimed at supporting you and relaxing, revitalizing, resetting setting your body, mind, and spirit. I'm your host and the visionary behind Omni Mindfulness. So what if just one story had the power to shift the trajectory of your life? What if you could become an instrument in helping others realize their true selves? And what if your soul's higher purpose lies in experiencing the joy of Omni Mindfulness? Remember, it's never too late to rewrite your story. Welcome to season seven as we embark on an, an exhilarating journey into energy awareness. In July, we explore the driving forces that fuel the lives of my guests, uncovering their passion and purpose. In August, we delve into the profound connection between somatic movement and vitality. And finally, in September, we explore holistic awareness where mind, body, and spirit unite for transformative experiences stay tuned for insightful conversations expert guests and tools to cultivate conscious energy awareness so let's dive into the season of energy awareness together and my next guest is dr lara may dr lara may is an advanced practice clinical pharmacist functional medicine health coach, and master attuned intuitive healer and teacher who specializes in getting to the root cause of disease via functional medicine and energy medicine. After working in emergency rooms and adult acute care for over a decade, she transitioned into integrative health. Due to her struggle with her own health, Lara started studying and practicing Usui and angelic reiki in 2014 then functional medicine health coaching in 2017 lara's passion and mission is to empower patients to take an active role in their health so that they can create their health on their own terms and now without further ado here is dr lara may Dr. May, I am so honored to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm glad this worked out for both of us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we were having a little conversation just before I hit record about energetic awareness, holistic awareness. And I feel like this is a pivotal time in our um, I, our, our generation, so to speak, mm -hmm. that are gaining a deeper understanding of in, intuitive medicine and intuitive awareness of our energy. And I really think you'd be wonderful to speak on this topic, given your background. So 
perhaps you can um, give the audience a little bit of a uh, background on what you currently practice. Okay, sure. Um, well, I just want to say a little too about, you know, like you've mentioned generational. Um, I really think we're in the midst of an entire global awakening. And I think this concept of holistic awareness really is part of that. And it's lending itself to all of us waking up in different ways. So sort it's sort of meeting us where we are, you know, like the best coaches and therapists will meet their patients, their clients exactly where they are and help them from there. And so that's also one of the things I do. I'm a functional medicine practitioner and health coach. I'm also a life coach, Reiki master teacher, and I teach some other intuitive uh, modalities as well, like channeling and Oracle card reading and angel messages, all those fun, fun things um, that I love so much, but really all of it, I, I weave all of it together for those that are ready. You know, not everyone is, and that's okay. So I have still have plenty of clients that just want the functional medicine piece. And what is that? That's, you know, a personalized meal plan, supplement protocol, some testing, and then essentially like the path forward into healing from whatever their physical ailment is. No problem. I got you covered. But for those that are looking for that deeper connection and willing and ready to dig a little deeper within themselves, then there is this concept of holistic awareness. And it's really a choice. And I talk a lot um, on my show. I have a, a podcast as well called Light Body Radio. And I just recently released an episode called uh, Radical Responsibility. And I feel like oh, this concept of holistic awareness weaves really um, well into that also because it's a choice. It's a way of life. But what does it mean? It means that we are deliberate. We're intentional. We are present as much as we can be. And we're also compassionate and understanding with ourselves, knowing that we're still human, that, you know, we have, I believe our souls have chosen to all incarnate here on this planet at this time to contribute to this awakening, to this path. And so becoming aware of our physical bodies, but also our minds, what are we thinking? Are we letting our thoughts run our lives? And how does that translate to how we're feeling? Because part of also what I teach in practice is our thoughts really create our feelings and emotions. And so if we don't like how we're feeling and we don't like these emotions or maybe we feel sometimes out of control with our emotions, we can be really triggered or reactive sometimes, especially when we're healing from trauma. You know, it's can feel out of control, but with holistic awareness, you're making a choice to dive into those, to really lean in and not be afraid to feel because knowing that everything is temporary. And once we feel our way through it, then that creates our actions and our results. And then, you know, the life that we see before us. So also that concept of like, we create our life, we create our health, we create our wellness. And what are we going to do about that? Are we ready to step into that responsibility? And it, it certainly is a responsibility because we each are accountable for those thoughts. We are each are accountable for how we manage our energy. And yet we live in a society where we try to put everything in a box saying, well, this is medicine. Um, let's just fix it with, and then you give it a label and you try mm -hmm. to, but I find it fascinating when I have guests who are ahead of the curve, like you said, Part of the awakening now what's your story behind how you tuned in to this practice of holistic awareness well i'm a um western medicine trained clinical pharmacist so let's start there <laughs> so people are co being completely transparent of where i'm coming from from that perspective so very based in science and the scientific method and you know very um i think that's left brain right very logical <laughs> But I've always felt connected to the spiritual world in some way, shape, or form. Um, I was raised in a um, fairly religious household in the Southern Baptist Church, and I never really felt at home in that community. And so um, over the years, I've tried different things, gone to different churches, studied different philosophies and religions, even throughout my education. I was just a couple courses shy of a minor in philosophy 
um, in undergrad. And so I've always really been curious. I'm a yogi myself and a certified yoga teacher. So I love, you know, that whole concept again of like bringing your awareness into your body. And I think yoga and meditation and breath work is such a good way to do that. It's such a healthy way. It's such a rich and vibrant way to do that. And it teaches us so much about ourselves. But through my challenges and my struggles with my own health, I was diagnosed with IBS in my early 20s. Before that, I was already suffering from chronic migraines and chronic sinus infections. And by my 30s, I, my medicine cabinet was just getting more and more full. But, you know, my practitioners, my Western medicine physicians, they had the best of intentions, but nothing was really helping. And so I found myself lying on the floor, the cold, hard floor of the hospital pharmacy in the middle of the night, working a graveyard shift in the throes of a horrible migraine with all the lights off. And I just thought, you know, like, I, I'm done. I can't keep doing this. Um, so I started seeking other modalities. I found functional medicine. I was already frequenting a chiropractor and that was helping with some physical pain. But of course, I was looking for that solution to my my bowel flare ups and my and really it was the migraines that were like stopping me in my track at that time in my life. And so my functional medicine practitioner put me on an elimination protocol and I just through this elimination, I started feeling better. And I realized that the whole gluten free thing was not just a fad, that there was again science behind it. And through working with her, I realized that there is so much more research, there's so much more science and evidence-based medicine that Western medicine doesn't practice. And I thought, why have we been, or like, why have I been, you know, sort of um, not exposed to this before? It sort of boggles my mind that there was so much good information out there. And that as we're trained in the Western medicine field, it's very much picked and chosen and very specific based on who's funding it is what you're taught. So um, it was a shift for me, but I was I was at that state where I was ready and willing. And I think in general, that's where we all have to be in our journey before we really start accepting and implementing these changes. And the place I was working at the time was not a positive work environment. So I was also looking deeper spiritually as like how this materialized in my life. Like, this whole concept of, did I manifest this for myself? What am I putting out there that's attracting this back to me? It was very early in my, you know, even studies and reading about the law of attraction. And I would listen and read Abraham Hicks, and Esther and Jerry Hicks's material, um, Wayne Dyer, Course in Miracles, you know, so many of those great teachers that I'm sure we're all aware of. They were my teachers too. So <laughs> that's yeah. sort of how that ca all came to be. So I started studying Reiki from there is where this is going. <laughs> well, and I find that also really fascinating because you mentioned a few things. One of them was the gut and we are now hearing more and more. And maybe it's just me because I'm in this world, but we hear more and more that there's a relationship between our mood our emotions and our gut health and maybe you could just a tiny bit elaborate on that because while you and I are aligned may, others may not have caught on to this well yeah like I said earlier when I first started down this path even though I had been diagnosed with IBS in my early 20s my physicians and practitioners didn't give me any tools except they said well there's this one prescription medication you can take it's, you know, kind of effective. We'll just have to see if it works for you. But if you do it, you'll have to be on it for the rest of your real life. And I thought, well, I don't want to do that. And I feel like there has to be more. But, mm -hmm. you know, then I was in my 20s. So I'm like, well, whatever. So <laughs> only when my health really started to stop me in my tracks that I really pay attention. And I think that's, that's the truth for a lot of people. So, but, you know, gluten free, like I said, was sort of a fad when it first started coming around and the whole paleo movement, you know, but really there is science behind it. There's research and we're starting to even understand more and more. If we even talk about the energy systems, our chakras, our solar plexus, the reason it's called that is because there's a plexus of nerves in that abdominal area. 
it's our core, it's our gut, and it is connected to the brain. And it's really connected to our entire body. And so when we say that your gut health, it really is the core to your immune system, to your emotional health, to, you know, so many other things, it's the truth. And really just, we're just now starting to understand it on a deeper level from the scientific perspective, but from the spiritual perspective, Ayurveda, yogi, yoga, you know, these traditions have known about this for thousands of years and have tools and, and modalities to treat and heal it. Yes. And I, I also recognize some other point you made. I, I feel like it's all connected, but the other point you made was in that period where you had the recognition of the gut health, when you were going through what you were going through, you also mentioned that the environment in which you were working perhaps played a role. And mm -hmm. I'd love for you to tie that back to holistic awareness, because I truly believe that that our environment can trigger or be a part of our health issues. Yes. So I, I'll just say, I'll start with this. I think we've all experienced some sort of trauma throughout our lives, whether it's big T or little T, honestly, to me, I'm not really concerned with which size T it is because our body doesn't really know the difference. Our body just sees trauma as fight or flight and or freeze. And then it creates an imprint in our cells, in our nervous system. And so when we're triggered, we're you, the whole concept of the word triggered, if you think about it, means that our body is releasing this flood of chemicals again, because something has reminded us of even if we don't remember what the trauma was, our body remembers. And so it releases this flood of chemicals, usually epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol. And then glucose, so this trauma, or sorry, fight or flight and stress also really increases our glucose production and our body can, can lead to um, insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes if it goes unchecked. So just throwing that out there too for anyone that, <laughs> that oh. thinks that stress is not a serious thing that can really lead to serious chronic conditions. But anyway, so that work environment at that time was encompassed a toxic boss that abused m multiple people within our department at different levels. And we sought help and we were essentially gaslighted um, again at different levels, different times. And this went on for multiple years. And I definitely think that that triggered this inflammatory response. And although I was walking around inflamed at baseline already, I think it definitely added to that. So whatever baseline inflammation I had, that stress level just sort of exasperated and, and I think accelerated also. It's, um, and how did you, well, what was your journey like from that place in your life to now and your now new awareness of how you can I would say not only proactively manage your energy holistically, but how you can help, how you're using your knowledge now to help others. Well, it really was my greatest teacher. I think if I hadn't been put in that situation and um, that I wouldn't really, I might still be on the path, but I wouldn't have gotten here as quickly because it really, um, I didn't want it to continue. And I knew that I somehow had power and I, and I was so early on in my journey, I didn't know where and what my power was, but I knew that there had to be an answer. And so that's why, like I told you all those teachers I started diving into Carolyn Mace was another big influence, especially coming to it from the medical intuitive side. Um, I still find her wisdom fascinating. You know, I love listening to her talks and reading her books. Um, but so, yeah, so it definitely steered me. And I think, I mean, I'm not necessarily a believer in destiny, but I, you know what I mean? I do feel like, like there was, I, we all have a purpose in life. I do believe that. And our souls again, chose to incarnate here. So I think this was just the thing that came together to sort of steer me along the path 
to get to where I am today so that I can speak from a place of experience instead of just sort of like an armchair person that's, oh, I've read a book about this, so I'm going to tell you about it. These are things that I've lived and lived through and come out the other side. And so that's what I teach. And and I think that's also too why I love collaborating with other teachers as well, because we've all had a different experience. We're all so unique energetically and physically. And so there's, you know, no shortage of people that need help. And it's one of our stories that's going to resonate with someone. It's just going to help that next person awaken and continue on their soul's purpose and life path. I couldn't agree more with everything you said, and especially knowing that while you're in the midst of that pain and journey, it doesn't feel pleasant, but knowing that when you come out on the other side, you now are instrumental in serving other souls, which is so profound. Um, you mentioned some some techniques that I, I think would be great if you could just elaborate on. Mm -hmm. uh, just to, and then maybe wrap it up by sharing three tips and how people can find you, which I'll include in the show notes. But um, you mentioned techniques like Reiki. So I have found that very fascinating. Maybe you could give us um, a highlight of what this means in terms of how you practice it for your patients. Sure. So I am um, trained and attuned in a Sui angelic crystal Reiki. Those are my three main ones. Um, the one I practice the most, honestly, is angelic Reiki. And that, so all Reiki is an energy healing system. It was founded by, um, a, you know, an ancient, it's an ancient Japanese art, but the core of it is intention and connecting with your, your soul self, your higher self, your team of guides and angels, and intentionally paneling the energy and your intention where you want it to go. So whether that's on yourself or someone that you're practicing with, and you learn this through the different levels and the different attunements, but it. The reason I love it is because it, especially in this concept of holistic awareness that we're talking about, that it, it does, I just, I feel like I'm overusing that word intentional, but, <laughs> but it really is. And, and, and that also, I feel like simplifies it. So it's not complicated. You, there's a willingness and an openness and the connection. And so when you are willing and you're opening and you are connecting to your higher self, to source energy. So it is a non-denominational practice. Um, then, then you are raising your vibration and you're raising your vibration, especially with angelic Reiki to have to, so you raise your vibration enough and the angels will maybe bring their vibration down, but not really. And then that's why I also love it. So it's a challenge for us to raise our vibration enough to connect with them and open up to their guidance and their healing energy. And then really within any kind of Reiki, you're the conduit for source energy. So it's really, um, I think it's sort of a foundational channeling practice. If you really think about it, um, it's not always taught that way, but that's my perception. And that's sort of how I teach it. And, and then I also teach advanced channeling classes. So it sort of helps people that are even curious about channeling that baseline and it gives them a place of light and love to work with energy because again we do live in a in, you know a planet of polarity so there is plenty of shadow and darkness and you know if people want to work with energy in that way they totally can but I am a light worker I only work with the highest vibrations possible and then and it's so specific to what you say so there's a reason that we are verbal beings and what we say also comes with the vibration. So also this all coincides with the laws of thermodynamics and physics. Matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. You know, um, so 
that's the first law of thermodynamics. So this also, I like to also like bring sort of the woo-woo and the science together so people understand that there actually is a foundation to it. And it's not just something that's made up and, <laughs> you know, and, and is sort of flighty and, you know, woo-woo. So um, I don't know. Did I, is that, do you want me to keep going or? It's fascinating. No, actually it did explain it. And I, I sincerely believe in it. And I sincerely have had, um, I would say, spurts of awakening and understanding the last several years going from what I felt like was just pure matter and physical stuff, whether it's the body or that big tree out there to now saying, no, that big tree out there is chi, it's energy. And when I walk barefoot in the backyard, it's that grounding energy that I, I'm resetting that energy within my body. And then when I work with clients, it's always starting with the intention. So I've heard this before from other energy workers that you're starting with intention and intention at the end of the day truly is energy right yeah so all of this carries vibration and all of this so sound carries vibration light is a vibration um that's why i love crystal reiki too because you'll use the vibration of those crystals that are also attuned to you know to reiki themselves so they're all like little reiki masters working on on the behalf of the client and my intention is always for the highest and greatest good of the client and for all of us really because we're all part of a network we're all we are all part of a oneness and so even though most of almost all of what we do is for ourselves really it's also for the betterment of the universe if you also take it back to this we're in this process of grand awakening so yeah and we're all connected so mm -hmm. gee now these are techniques you've mentioned but even maybe taking it one step further when we think about holistic awareness can you bring it down to um more pra practical levels for those who are completely green to this concept of holistic awareness saying you know i'll just put one idea out there maybe you can elaborate that even the food we eat is energy, mm -hmm. but holistically speaking, all of the vibrations of the different types of food affect us on so many levels. For sure, especially when we're eating whole foods that come from Mother Earth, from planet Earth. So we are beings that are living on, on a living, breathing planet. So it's not just some dormant rock. There is a magnetic core to the center of the earth that, again, we know about through science, physical science. But with that comes the energetic aspect. So it has magnetic poles, which are energetic. Anything that comes out of the earth, whether it's a vegetable, a fruit, or like you said, trees, herbs, the birds, the animals, all the flora and fauna, they all have a different energetic imprint. And... With that being said, though, you can upgrade the vibration of what you're eating with your intention. And if you think about all the different religions of the world previously, and any of them that practice the blessing, you know, saying a blessing over your food before you eat it, that's a very similar and I think came with a very um, a likened intention. So even if you're not religious and you don't say a blessing over your food from that perspective, you can still come to a quiet space before you eat, close your eyes, breathe easily and deeply, come into a space of gratitude in your heart, and then just, you know, ask for your guides and angels, your higher self to bless this food, to raise its vibration for your highest and greatest good. And it seems so simple, but it can be really powerful because unfortunately, most of the food that we are getting in the Western world, the United States, is really depleted of vitamins, nutrients, um, that sort of thing. So it's not as vibrant as it once was, but that doesn't mean that we can't liven it up. That makes sense. It does make sense. And even earlier, you mentioned not beyond just the concept of what we digest and the vibration with which it comes. You had mentioned words are vibration. And perhaps mm -hmm. 
the colors we choose, um, the environment, how we d decorate it. They're, they're all vibrations. Yes, uh, there was a period where I was working with an Ayurvedic practitioner, and that was actually part of the protocol based on uh, re, um, re-establishing a doshic balance within my system, which is what Ayurveda looks to do. It was not only like the color of the foods, but what colors were was I wearing? Because yes, colors have their own frequency, their their vibration. So, it we really. Again, the, coming back to this uh, holistic awareness, it's it's everything. If the true word pull <laughs> is. <laughs> I, just a few years ago, um, I started, even more recently after than that, started wearing more orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The vibrancy from that energy. Uh, um, so for the audience who would just like maybe three tips that they can immediately start practicing. Any any suggestions you have to integrate holistic awareness into your life? Yeah, the first one is to be connected. So connect with the light every day. And if you can, throughout your day. And at first that might seem a little daunting or impossible, but it's very simple. You just, you know, you can close your eyes if you want. You don't have to, but you take your energy and your intention down through your feet into the core of mother earth feeling that connection you allow it to come back up through your body all the way out through the top of your head connecting with source energy above you i also like to connect with the great central sun because concept of the great central sun is that life giving ball in the universe that gives light to the entire universe and it carries light codes with it that are healing and you know highly like 12th dimensional. So again, this whole concept of raising our vibration. And so once you've connected from above and below, you bring it down into the center of your heart space and just get into the practice of doing that every day when you wake up. Um, I like to do it in the morning with the sunrise if, I, if at all possible. So really bringing that sunlight energy into my body. And then throughout the day, especially if you're triggered or you're at work and you're feeling a little stretched or stressed or perturbed, <laughs> you know, that's a reminder to reconnect with the light, raise your vibration. And when you find, when you do this consistently, you will find that things in your life change. You will find that you attract different things, people, situations, opportunities, because you're changing your vibration with your intention, with the light and with grounding it to mother earth. And notice that when I did the grounding, I didn't connect with a cord or a root. It was just light. And I think that's something else that something different that I teach. So when I do teach grounding, it's not with cords or, you know, any of that stuff. It's just light because so many of us, I think, are feeling stuck and in situations or, you know, um, lives that we might not want but we know again like where I was I know I can create something different so keep that in mind like when you're grounding go hug a tree go sit next to a tree and you know tune into that energy but be wary of cords and roots because if you think about it cords and roots don't move so we really want to bring the light into our feet into our hips you know, get things moving. So I like to use the light a lot with my uh, practices and, and, and my healing techniques because light is fluid. It can go anywhere. And I think it can really awaken and clear out, clear up and help things move through. And so I guess I gave you uh, several things there, but. <laughs> I was taught rounding through the cord concept and what mm -hmm. I like concept a light because I do find it more fluid and I've always found the cord concept very stifling mm -hmm. yes and then you know another uh tool that I use a lot is breathing and I know like breath work has become a buzzword and I'm happy for that at the same time but you know sometimes when things come when things become buzzwords they also can become taken less seriously but Breathwork is so powerful. And even just starting with, again, sort of like I described when we're, you know, 
raising the vibration of our food is just pausing, tuning in, feeling into your breath. That's holistic awareness. Holistic awareness. Where are we breathing? How are we breathing? Are we breathing from up here in our neck and shoulder region? Are we breathing from our belly, which is where we should be to get the full expansion of the diaphragm? Or are we somewhere in the middle? Are we allowing our lungs to expand, but maybe not our bellies? And so just tuning in and again, doing this without judgment, doing this from a place of self-love and starting there. And then, you know, once you are in tune with your breath, then you can start doing things that are more um, awakening or intentional or fun. There's, you know, um, I'm a Kundalini Yogi practitioner myself. And so breath of fire can be very energetic. Um, so there's lots of prescriptive breathing techniques that you can take part in. But I would say, like you said, from for the newbie, the starting from square one, just at the beginning of your journey, just start with tuning in and bringing that awareness into your body. Wonderful. So you mentioned three things. You talked about the grounding of the energy working with the light energy and breath work and really tuning in to where the breath currently, where the energy of the breath is currently residing, which is wonderful. Well, thank you, doctor. I sincerely would love you back in the near future. If there is a, to a topic that you are, are interested in. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for so much for having me. I know this came together for us really quickly, actually in less than 24 hours, but I think that's also too like how the universe operates when two things are in alignment, things unfold quickly. And so I would just like to give people a heads up on that if you're at the beginning. And so sometimes change can come faster than you think. And, um, but it's a good thing. So be ready to go with the flow too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, you could you hit it. Um, you're spot on on exactly how I felt. You were in tune with the topic that I was hoping to, the message I was hoping to send in this month's podcast. And you're so tuned in that it, it's really just worked out perfectly. And I'm yes. so honored that you're here. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you having this platform and the work that you're doing, bringing these topics. Um, I it's exciting and valuable and i'm i'm really grateful for you and the work you're doing also thank you i i look forward to having you back again one day yes thanks okay have a great day thank you Thanks for tuning in, sweet soul. If you've enjoyed this episode, I would be so grateful for your kind review on Apple Podcast. Simply click on the link in the show notes to leave your lovely feedback and uplift our spirits. Your support means the world to me and helps our show thrive. So please show me your love and continue to practice Omni Mindfulness.